Hello, Booktube. I'm Peg, the Book Prize addict, and I'm back today to talk about uh, more books that might be possibilities to be on the Women's Prize for Fiction uh, that'll be uh, coming up. The I can't. I don't know if they're going to have 16 or 20 books on the long list, but it's going to be on March 8th <laughs> next week. So I've been. Uh, have a series here where I'm going through uh, different books that, um, first of all, I want to direct you to the link below to the wonderful video by Eric and Anna, um, where they each um, predicted 16 books and um, what they thought might be on the prize. And uh, they're certainly more in tune with the contemporary uh, literary situation than I am. But I have had so much fun. I checked all their, just about all their books out from the library and have been reading at least 50 pages of it, reporting on them. And now I've begun to add some of my own uh, predictions. So it's kind of fun. I sort of invited myself to their team, you might say. Um, one of the things I really like about BookTube is uh, finding out what younger people are into book-wise these days. I don't have any children or grandchildren, so this gives me a great chance to see what younger people are thinking and liking reading-wise and otherwise. So um, be sure to, some of you have been putting uh, comments on what books that appeal to you or you like, and I really enjoy that, hearing what you think about these. So please continue doing that. And I noticed that now Simon Savage also has a uh, video up with his predictions for the, for the prize. So we've got lots of books to talk about and look through um, here. Anyway, so let's get started with today's. Uh, the first one I have is a pick by Anna in, the, in her video called We That Are Young. Um, by an Indian uh, author, um, and um, it actually takes place in India. Um, first of all, I want to say that I happen to have this book because it was on the Republic of Consciousness list. That's a that's a uh, prize that's still going on. They have their short list out now of uh, books by small publishers, and it has really done well. I've made. Uh, uh, several reviews on it, and I'll I need to review the the shortlist here shortly. But anyway, so it has done so well, and the the press is gallery galley beggar press, and uh, I've I've read some things that'll surely be picked up by uh, the paperback pay, or the rights might be picked up by a larger press. I don't I don't know how that's done, but it's really done well uh, for the for the author and and for. Uh, the press. Um, as I said, it takes place in India, and it's actually a take on the King Lear story. There are three grown daughters and a father, and it's about a very wealthy part of uh, India. Uh, these are like billionaires that they own a hotel chain, and again, the father is uh, looking at the three daughters, and they're thinking about who's going to inherit it. And they also have a male cousin who just comes back from the U.S. who plays a big part. And it's, I, I really loved it. It's if you like seeing what rich people uh, get into and they fly all over the place in their own private jet in India. Uh, it's just it's just great and very colorful. And uh, I, I really like this a lot. Okay, so next we have one of Eric's picks called A Boy in Winter. Um, this is the, this is the, uh, it must be the paperback version or new version. I ordered it from, from uh, Book Depository back when it came out in England, and it had the boy's picture, but, on, but not all the uh, uh, kudos that it's gotten from other, uh, other uh, critics that, on the front, but that's fine, whatever. Anyway, it's a story um, I've only been able to read. I couldn't uh, get this at the library, so I've only been able to read a sample, but I do have some um, thoughts and from what I've read for it. It's, uh, take, it's a story, historical novel about 1941, 
when uh, the German invasion of a small town in Ukraine and this boy and other characters play a part in this. And one of the things I read in the comments, I don't think this is giving anything away. In fact, it might make you want to read it more is like halfway through, there's a death scene, death squad, the SS death squad, getting ready to start shooting at a group of, of Jewish people. And uh, somehow what you expect doesn't happen and it's all upended. And uh, they say that actually the writing is not all, you know, things of killing and torture, that it is some mystery relieved by uh, flashes of light and humanity. So that it looks interesting. Okay, next we have a book that was uh, picked by both Eric and Anna and myself, uh, Manhattan Beach. Um, this is by uh, Jennifer Egan, and she won a Pulitzer Prize for her uh, novel, The Goon Visit from the Goon Squad. Um, couple years ago, so she's quite well known. Um, this one is, I think, actually quite a bit different from her former ones. It's more of a historical novel. It takes place in uh, during World War II in New York, where um, the, the woman main character uh, becomes a diver in the, in the shipyard somehow. And um, <clears throat> I did note, I have read like the first 50 pages of it. And I have to say it was very interesting how, knowing what I did about what's gonna happen just from you know reading the blurbs on it. Um, the first uh, scene has Anna, the woman, who's only 12 years old in this scene, and she goes with her father to uh, visit a, a business partner of his or business acquaintance or some, something who lives on a beach. And in this, they use, you can really tell the foretelling it's called when you get little hints of things. And in it, you can see that she started to be very attracted by the sea and, and her walk, during her walk on it, her feelings towards the ocean. And you can also see that um, there's some mysterious something going on between these, these two men, these business uh, men uh, that actually again, foretells, uh, and I do know that something happens later with this man that's part of a mystery and somebody disappears. So uh, I, I'm, I like, it's interesting what I can get from just reading like a first part, uh, and I'm trying to look closer at the writing like that. So that was interesting. Okay, next we have, oh, I've got some, I've got some gossip on this one. It's called Asymmetry, you can't really see, that's the uh, British version, I'll show you the American version, which is a little easier to see if it would turn right, let's get it bigger. Okay, this is Asymmetry by Lisa Holliday, and this is her first book out, and um, it's actually in um, three sections, maybe that's why it's called Asymmetry, uh, but um, it's about a young woman editor who has a romantic uh, relationship with a much older writer um, who works, I guess, for the same press or whatever. And here's the deal. And I read this in the paper, not a, so I'm pretty sure it's true, but this, this author, Lisa Halliday, evidently had a romantic relationship with Philip Roth back in the days. And, and, and the same thing, he's of course retired now in his 80s and he was much older, and uh, so it's, you know, people are wondering, is it a memoir, is, is it autobiographical? But anyway, I also read in this article that he had pre-read it, they're still really good friends, and he pre-read the book and really approved of it and liked it, so uh, I thought that was interesting, and I'm, I'm really anxious to read more of this one. Okay, so... That's all I have for today. I'll be back with more picks. Uh, meanwhile, there's some uh, awards coming, being announced as far as the selections. Tomorrow, March 1st, the uh, Walter Scott Historic Novel uh, Prize. They'll have their uh, long list out. And then uh, 
Also, the long list for the Stella Prize has come out. Now, that's an Australian prize for the best woman's prize, the best woman's writing in Australia. And I have will be teaming up with Lisa. She used to be Hide and Seek, Lisa of Hide and Seek, who is a wonderful Australian booktuber, knows lots about contemporary fiction there. And we're going to figure out some way to do a joint maybe read along or video along or something on it. So I'm really looking forward to that too. So stay tuned and talk to you later. Bye.